Okay, so now that we've got our trigger bow in, we're gonna have to test to make sure we didn't bend it too much. So we gotta put this thing back together, including the Series 80 parts. Yeah, we could do this a few times depending on how much adjustment we want in this. But, uh, so you're gonna get pretty good at putting these Series 80 parts in. So first we're gonna take our pin that fits in this hole right here. We're gonna get it set up, right, like so. I'm gonna get my sear and disconnector. And the way they sit is like this. So notice the disconnector with the little round part at the top. I'm gonna to take my sear, set it right on top. Grab it by the, uh, the, the sear there, or the disconnector. Stick it in the hole inside. Back out my little pin a little bit, there we go. Slide that in, wiggle it a little bit, got it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a slight gap over here on the right. That's where the Series 80 stuff is gonna go, right in here. So I'm gonna grab it. There's two pieces, remember? This is the bottom part that we're working on. That's this one right here, and I like to think about its orientation, and I'll put a picture of all this in there, as like a gun handle. A grip handle on a pistol so it's going to go in like so so i'm going to get my sear my disconnector to the left as much as i can then i'm going to take this guy and i'm going to drop him right in here well i say drop i'm going to wiggle him around till i can push this pin through get it made it up at that hole and i missed so let's try again Sometimes you can put a little oil on this piece and it's the surface tension of the oil makes it stick a little better. Okay, so now we've got that in. So our pin went all the way in, our sear and disconnector are in place and the bottom part of the Series 80 is there. Now we can do the top piece. This piece is gonna go in right like so. So I'm gonna grab it, drop it in the top, like that. So this one's pretty simple. So next, we'll take our hammer, set it in place, take our the bigger of the two pins, flat head, flat side over here, coming in from the left. And wow, I can't believe I hit the Series 80 part. It went through the, the hammer and went through the hole for this little tab right here of the other part of the Series 80. So there we go. I got lucky on that one. Okay, so there we go. We've got that part in. We're ready to try our leaf spring. We take our leaf spring. We set it on top. There's a groove in the back. Little tab here. Set that there. Make sure that once it's in here, that the leaf spring, oops, moved on me. Okay, once it's in place, make sure that the, the, the leaf springs here at the end are on top of everything. You don't want it underneath the sear and disconnector. Your gun won't work. So then we'll take our mainspring housing. We'll slide that up here. Just enough to hold down the leaf spring. And then we'll bend our, uh, or turn our hammer strut down. Push the mainspring housing up a little bit till it goes into that. And then I'm just gonna take my punch and stick it through this hole right here at the bottom. And that will simulate this pin so I don't have to hammer it back in. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to test the hammer. I'm gonna cock it. And look at that, the take up. There's hardly any now. We've re reduced it a lot. You don't want to dry fire the gun with it like this with no top end. So theoretically, I could probably bend those ears a little bit more, but that's not bad right there. So there we go.
So anyways, that's how to adjust your trigger, whether you're adjusting your, your current trigger or installing the new one. Just keep in mind that you may have to take the gun apart multiple times and put it back together multiple times in order before you get all your settings just right. Okay, so now that we've got our gun back together, there's one more adjustment. We've got the little trigger bows, or the little ears taken care of for our, uh, our take up. And now we need to adjust the over travel pin or the adjustment screw. And right here in these aftermarket screws or aftermarket triggers, you're going to see a hole in the front. And what there is, is there's a tiny little Allen screw in there. So once again, we're going back to our little demo here. And if I screw this in, you'll notice the screw comes through here. So I can stay focused here. And what this does is the trigger will only travel backwards so far and then it hits the um, the magazine release. So if you tighten this or sink this screw in too far, it will engage the the magazine release and the gun won't go off because you can't push the trigger back far enough because that screw is keeping your rearward, rearward uh, movement from going any further back. So what I like to do and the whole goal of this is to keep your trigger to minimize the movement of your trigger for faster shots and you know just a better feeling uh, trigger job so it's not so sloppy so what I like to do is I like to take that screw back it down to where it won't go off like what I've done right here so we're cocked and grip safety down and everything the gun will not go off off safety and everything so what I've done is I've screwed that screw down to where it's sticking out so far it's touching this right here so then I'm gonna take my Allen screw and I'm gonna back that out so let me see that was about a quarter turn probably let's see if I can get a, a turn on it let's try it again so there we go so let's take a look at the overall movement so we've got our take up and our over travel. Once I break the shot, the trigger should not move any further. Yep. So like I said, once the shot is taken, the hammer falls, there's no movement on the, on the trigger at all. So what happens is you shoot, the gun cycles, you release a little pressure off your, off the trigger, it resets and you shoot again. So there's very little movement of the trigger. You're not having to, uh, there's not much movement of the trigger basically. I don't know how else to say it. But uh, so that's the goal of this and these are the adjustments you can get for aftermarket triggers. I'll put links to the video description below so you can check those out. Uh, maybe pick one up for yourself depending on your gun. But uh, Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews. Thanks.